From its source in the Black Forest to its delta on the Black Sea, 2,800 kilometers away, the River Danube's fate is bound to the 83 million people living in its basin. It provides them with energy, a corridor for transport, water for drinking and irrigation. It's a source of food, a place to play, but it also serves as a sewer. After a century of intense use, its health is damaged, and nutrient runoff into the river has plunged the Black Sea into a crisis. The response is a bold global environmental facility, a UNDP program to restore its vitality. What's striking to me about this river is it's not something where it requires huge amounts of investment per se to clean it up. That's important, but even more important is how it's used, how people come together and agree on cooperative arrangements for its use, uh, what fishing they do down below us in the Black Sea how they treat the sanitation that goes into this river, what they do to cure the industrial pollution. And all of these are political will first, money second. The Danube has traditionally divided Europe. But despite wars and man-made disasters, the 11 nations on its banks are discovering, through protecting the Danube, they share a common future. The uh, Danube River uh, Protection Convention is uh, the mechanism for cooperation of the Danube countries and it is therefore very important uh, that uh, joint action will lead to effective reduction of pollution reduction and sound water management in the Danube River Basin. Uh, water management is uh, now one of the key issues uh, of uh, the uh, world reserves, uh, natural reserves on the world. The Danube has, luckily enough, uh, very good uh, water reserves for uh, 82 million people living in the Danube River Basin, but we have to protect these reserves. Behind the treaties and conventions, the Commission is working at street level, drawing the peoples of the Danube into participating in the river's future. Danube uh, Basin, we have countries with different economic development. We have EU members with uh, very developed economies, and we have uh, many countries, or most of the countries are uh, transitional ones. So, for example, the GDP per capita will rise from about more than 25,000 US per capita up to the levels below 1,000. These disparities are very significant. My talk basically tries to explore the, connection between the imbalance of poverty and wealth is an issue of globalization. London School of Economics sociologist Nikos Muzelis, an expert on the region, says it is not insurmountable. The situation is not hopeless because if the technological aspects of globalization are irreversible, its regime of regulation is reversible. There's nothing immutable, iron law-like, as far as the neoliberal character of globalization is concerned. This was imposed and constructed by some major actors, by some powerful states, and it can be changed again by powerful states. I have a very simple vision of uh, the role of outsiders in development in the new century and that is if we can help countries find the right policy solutions then resources follow because where you have a good environmental policy for a river like this and then raise resources to clean it up the effect sticks uh, the rivers improve the donors are happy the people of the river are happy it's effective we also hope that the Danube River Basin shall in the future be a new center of social, economic and uh, cultural development in uh, the European region and an example of sound environmental management.